Okay, here we have the Ocklum engine. It's named after my family, Oliver, Charles, Lisa and Marie. And basically how it works is that it's kind of like a pump that pumps a bigger pump. It's made, the, this part here is the intake manifold and the gas travels through that. These act as pistons inside their chamber. Now the way I envisage it being connected to um, like say a rotating shaft or anything like that is you'd have a plate that would either be above it or below it that would connect it. Um, they, all these travel in sync, all these um, moving parts, they travel at the same speed. So the, the connection is very simple, it would be like a, um, a, what's it called, the steam engines, uh, the way the wheels are connected on them. Now how that works is, that acts as a seal, that piston there acts as a seal. You could also use it as a piston, maybe create a miniature form of the engine between here and here. But it, it basically acts as a seal, so that piston travels away from there and that seals the gap, so that acts as the intake along there. As that travels around, it tra it ends up in a position like that. Now that is the charge or the amount of fuel and air that's going to be going into the engine. Now as that travels around, you can the that opens up, and that that piston then moves by it, and then that seals it off. So that will actually that'll seal seal this going there. So as you can see, this one will move towards here, this piston here, and it'll be pumping gas out. Now at the same time, that that this is where the explosion happens or the burn in the combustion chamber. So that's basically where all the the particles or whatever fuel you're burning gets burnt, and it's continuously burning. So because it's being continuously pumped in the fuel, you don't need to have a spark ignition or anything like that. Once it's ignited, it'll, it'll run continuously. When it gets to here, now this piston here. And this piston here are two different sizes. They have two different surface areas at the front. So this bit here, this little dark bit here, and this dark bit here, will actually have two different sizes. Now, basically, what that acts like is uh, kind of like a rotating door powered by a piston. Now, how how I basically came up with this engine, it kind of evolved over the years. Originally, I had it just as a two sets of gears. And as the gears intermesh, they acted like the pistons of an engine, and it's kind of evolved over the years to be a running, uh, running a piston through a chamber. Now I know people have come up with similar designs, but uh, I basically came up with this one when I was inventing the sort of the seal and running piston idea. I came up with it completely by myself, so I didn't actually, I didn't happen upon their inventions till after after I invented mine. But um, basically, how it works is that piston surface area. Is actually bigger than that and what that means is those the bits that uh, if you take that surface area away from that surface area that's what the size of the piston you're left with so this in the video is probably not as big as I'd like it to be in the engine the engine may be four or five times bigger than that so basically that acts as a pump to inject the fuel and air into that so as that expands along that it acts as the inverse of that so it gets pushed around, which pushes the whole, creates the whole engine into motion, and then that spins around and then does the inverse. So that's the outtake or the exhaust um, area there. So as the air comes, as the spent fuel and air after it's expanded comes along in here, and then it gets pushed by that all the way around, and then finally that's the part of the outtake manifold where that's traveling towards there and it pushes out the exhaust gas. So that's basically how it works. You could turbocharge it or make it bigger by say having a, a second one of these big um, pistons on the opposite side where it just pump fuel and gas into there. So it would compress the amount of fuel and gas going into there before it would go into the charge chamber and explode and expand. So that's basically how the engine works. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment or anything, if you didn't quite understand, I'll be happy to reply. So if you have any questions or any queries, uh, send them up. I'm going to put up a, um, a particle uh, a particle emitter on this as well, showing you basically how, how the gas travels around the system and how it acts as an engine. It should, in the particle emitter animation, it should, the particles should spread out here as if they're like exploding and then travel around and then a fair, like be very far apart as they're coming out here. So that's basically how the Ocklum engine works and the reason I think it's probably 
a lot higher efficiency and a lot easier to make than other rotary engines is first of all a lot of rotary engines they have a problem with the seals now there's a thing called a point I call it a point contact seal where it the seal is only a single point so it's kind of like a it doesn't take up any surface area it's kind of like um, a blade now you see that in the rotor engines like the Wankel engine and things like that where it takes up a very a very very small surface area the seal whereas in this engine the seal is actually the length of the piston and the same goes for the seals of the sealing pistons there so th that would get rid of the problem of sealing in rotor engines and that's actually one of the main problems with rotor engines so if this engine would also the other thing that about it that make it a lot more easier to make basically is the timing because all these travel at the same rotation rate now in the video I have put up um, there are, there's problems with the animation software it wasn't working properly but they they don't show them rotating at the exact same rate they're, they're close enough but with this they're um they're meant to rotate all these four um four pistons um or eight pistons whatever way you want to look at it they all rotate at the same speed so the the moving part or the parts that need to be um what you call the parts that need to be made to make them rotate at the same speed are a lot less um, expensive because it's essentially just a crank on all four of those and a bar that connects them to make sure they all rotate at the same speed and that makes it very very simple to engineer and also makes a very very simple design you could actually ho probably hobby build this yourself or like use one of the um, online machine shops that you can download and make your own version of this so that's the Aquam engine um, it's been years in the making I started kind of inventing it when I was a kid so it's kind of evolved over maybe 12 13 years of, uh, of thinking about it so that's my final engine okay what you see here is the particles being emitted in the intake manifold they represent the fuel and air coming into the engine at this point they're starting to meet the seal the green seal which is the the sealing pistons and on the right the red pistons start traveling and creating an expanding chamber as they travel around the red pistons then seal it off and bring it around to the combustion chamber where they meet the green seal again on the other side in the combustion chamber it, they push the air and fuel mixture into the exploding expanding volume on the left you'll see the bigger piston is then receiving the explosion and taking the gas away from that or receive, basically being pushed by it and pushing the entire engine acting as the power piston now in this animation it's a little more clear because it's less on the 3D side it's uh, took a little less time to render as well see it's coming up towards the um, green seal then going into the expanding chamber then as it travels around the red um, piston acts as a chamber in itself and brings it around to the combustion chamber where it's sealed off then it's pushed up into the combustion chamber as you can see it's expanding or getting further apart the particles are and that pushes the big piston on the left now that big piston then after it's traveled fully around creates a sealed chamber where the spent gas is brought around to the green chamber and or the green seals should I say and it prevents it from going back into the combustion chamber and also pushes it out the exhaust so that's basically how it works okay I thought I'd show one last look at the engine in 3D perspective um, as you can see the pistons themselves are actually rectangles um, see if I can see better there see yeah uh, they're actually rectangles so they're not round you could make round ones uh, come out of the top and they'd seal just as well out of the top of the plate if I was to do it I'd put a backing plate to connect these two together and to connect it to the overall engine just like a plate that would run around like a circle at the edges so that's the engine the Oakland engine or the Oakland engine um, I have a few more engines coming up so uh, throw up a like or subscribe I suppose if you want to see them